this is some Burlington shirt and uh, got it from another friend of mine um, I think this is heat treated it's got some fossils in it so it should be interesting I've already begun napping it some of it's really nice some of it's kind of rough but what I'll be doing is I'm going to try to duplicate a uh, dovetail with some beveling resharpening on it now I got this point off of eBay and I'm pretty sure it's real it's got some issues with it um, I still think it's real though it's got some damage to the uh, these uh, shoulders and the base this looks like old damage not recent and the tip looks like it's been reworked you can see the difference in patina but I think this is a an old reworking not a recent reworking because uh, I took off some some chips from the tip myself and uh, the underlying material looks really crumbly I removed some off of here and some off of there and what that tells me when it's crumbly it's also crumbly down here is that it was exposed to heat and it became uh, really really damaged by the heat not so much structurally it's still pretty strong but as far as the uh, crystal structure it looks really crumbly and it doesn't flake like the, the rest of it so I'm pretty sure it's real and I'll be duplicating this type of point this dovetail a few things I noticed uh, well most dovetails are larger and they're just resharpened but I've noticed that the middle section is thicker than the base down here which is pretty common but it, it doesn't tend to thin out very much toward the tip and uh, unless you know unless it's at the very tip and it looks like it's been reworked so I don't know how the actual tip would have looked like but anyway I did some uh, some duplications yesterday or try to now I did most of it with indirect percussion I'd say 99% of it just a little bit of pressure flaking at the base here before I was before I ground it and I can get this type of flaking I can get this type of flaking with indirect percussion this angle here the angle of the uh, resharpening it's very easy to duplicate with indirect percussion with pressure it produces more of a, a 90 degree edge well, but with indirect it produces more of that it's like a uh, 60 degree or something Anyway, I can duplicate this a lot easier with indirect percussion, so that's what I'm going to use. I tried another one that's larger. Still not quite able to do the same type of flaking. But it's all indirect percussion. And this was really thick, so I took some thinning flakes from the beveled edge. You know, I, I, sh I took some flakes off this way since it had a nice bevel to begin with I took some flakes off there turned it around flipped it over took some flakes off there to thin it down but it, it tends to round off this transition between the uh, resharpening and the original face it makes this more rounded or less pronounced the bevel on this is very distinctive doesn't look like flakes were removed from this from this side because it would kind of blur this uh, this line here it would you know tend to roll over that edge and not make it so sharp when removing flakes from this from this side and shooting them across there so it was you know the thickness was established early and then beveled for resharpening
you know, this the angle, like I was saying, is easy to reproduce with uh, indirect percussion. But not so much with pressure. Pressure, like I said, tends to create a steeper edge or a 90 degree, closer to a 90 degree edge. And there's hardly any step fractures at all on the on the original. Okay. So I'm going to take a piece of this Burlington. I think this is heat treated, like I said. Um, I've got a preform. I'm not sure how old this is. I'm going to save this for later. I'm not going to try napping this preform, although it's probably the best piece of material I have. I'm going to try this here first. Soft hammer stone. with a soft hammer stone I hit it right here it produces a nice diffuse bulb of percussion This angle is just barely good enough for the hammer stone. So I'm just very lightly brushing it. I'm going to zigzag these edges. Use a little bit harder hammer stone. The pieces from the hammer stone were starting to fly off, so. Well, I'm afraid to hit it too hard with the hard hammer stone, it'll just break the whole thing. That's unfortunate. It's almost easier to do this with indirect. I'm going to try to you know, reduce some of the width so I can get in there. So 
if I get in here, hit there, I can start to create a better platform, but it's just crumbling like crazy. A couple more times and that'll be it. Well, that was pretty good. Stone is very forgiving of hammer stones. You notice there's no crushing at all. Usually, even with a soft hammer stone on my Texas material, there'd be some crushing going on, but there's none there. Little slight lip on the tip of that platform. So the material is very forgiving. is nice. If it wasn't I'd go straight for the copper but this Burlington seems to be pretty good. And I noticed that too with the points I was making. I could get fairly far along with just the hammer stone. Nice. I haven't worked much Burlington and uh, after this I'm going to try to work a lot more because it is very cooperative. Gotta watch it because this type of hit can break the whole thing. Gotta make sure I don't hit too high up on the platform. This is the platform here. These will make nice arrowheads, some of these some of these flakes. Some fossils in here, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to indirect. It's getting to the point where I'm a little bit afraid to you know make a mistake and hit way too high on one of these platforms and snap the whole thing. It's important that for these type of points that have the beveling is to uh, keep this wide, flatten out both faces, and then do the beveling in such a way that it'll show up. It probably wasn't done that way on purpose in the past, but when doing a reproduction you gotta keep that kind of stuff in mind. And in the past they probably just did it without thinking about it. The, uh, establishing the thickness early and keeping it wide. That way you can resharpen it quite a few times with a minimum amount of skill in the resharpening. And indirect works pretty good for the uh, zigzagging or alternate flaking to get rid of those big, fat, thick edges. I don't want to drive too much right now. I'll wait till later to drive flakes into the middle. I want to be very careful about how I take care of the thickness. Dad.
Okay, so I'm gonna do some trimming to get the basic shape. Just a piece of granite. Brushing strokes, removing very small flakes. Now the bases on these can be pretty narrow. I think the preforms were teardrop shaped. Very cooperative with Hammerstone. I don't know how they how they made these in the past. If there's evidence of Hammerstone work, extensive Hammerstone before thinning, or even during the thinning, I don't know, but. I'm pretty sure I could do a lot of this work with just hammerstone if I had a lot of material on my hands and some more time I could get used to it. So what I'm going to use indirect for most of this. And of course billet works also, but my I tend to use indirect and hammerstone. And uh, not much billet work at all. But that's just my style. I don't know what the Native Americans used. These are early archaic points, and the bases are ground. The base here is ground. I could tell a big difference between this broken sharp edge and the pre-existing edge and it's quite a difference. This this part here is heavily ground and this is pretty sharp. So it's obvious on this one that the base is ground. This edge is, is still fairly sharp. Anyway. I have to be very careful how I prepare this edge. I can't make too many of these strikes where there's a very pronounced bulb of percussion. I've got to keep this edge fairly thick so that when I do the beveling it shows up. I've got a lot of mass to remove, so I'm, I'm doing. It's it's going to be fine. I just need to keep that in mind as far as the thickness goes early on. So I have a habit of doing a lot of thinning in the beginning. At the same time, I'm trying to shape it. Probably should turn the edge one way or the other. So, let's see. I'm going to 
turn the edge this way. Same thing with this side, I'm going to turn it that way. Okay, it's been 22 minutes. That's good enough for the preform. I'm going to start thinning and making it flatter in the next video. Go ahead. I'm going to take a break right now and get a drink of water.